Hey, welcome from a sunny Dublin city centre. It's the 19th of July. Today's video, we're going to talk about creating charts in T-Kinter. We're going to take a set of Excel sheet data, transform it into three charts, and one of them will have interactivity where we can change the data from month to month. So let's go and have a look at it and see what it's all about. See you on the other side. Take care, bye. Right, so uh, we're going to go through uh, this tutorial with T-Kinter. And the purpose of this is to create these three charts on the screen in front of you. Uh, the one here on the right side is actual facts. Its values can change. So if I just do this, as you can see, the lines are changing. So we're going to take you through that last. It's a bit involved in that, but the other ones are a bit more straightforward. Uh, they don't change at all. So uh, it's just this one here on the right. So let's have a look at it now and see how we do it. Okay. So, we are going to start off with the pie chart. Before we start off the pie chart, there's a couple of things we need to do. So we need to do the import statements. So as you can see there, we got these four, one, two, four, five import statements. Um, Tkinter, obviously just doing an import. Uh, Pandas we're going to use because we can create a data frame down here, which allows us to create the calcs, calculation for some of the data we need to go into the charts. Matplotlib, again, is just to do with this line and this line, or to do uh, what they actually help to create the charts. And NumPy is just used with one of the calculations for the values in the bar charts. Okay, so what we'll do is moving on. Uh, we're gonna create a dashboard, and the dashboard is gonna equal to the TK function, okay? And the dashboard's gonna have a geometry, one nine hundred by one two hundred. It's going to have a background grey and its type is going to be chart data for European region. So if we go here, there's your the name, and this is the actual. So just one thing I'll show you now this is actually enlarged to fit the whole screen, and that is done via this line here. So by putting it to equal to zoomed, basically makes the, the screen fully enlarged, and that happens when we actually open up the screen. So the next thing we're going to do is bring in the data. And the data is, we're going to just basically call the data frame data. Okay, pretty straightforward. And we're reading it in from this Excel file. Now, I think I have it open here. I do, yeah. So this is the Excel file, and this is all the raw data. Um, basically, split over 12 months, and this fictitious data, obviously, for a, just any product sales. And then each column is split by country. So we're going to have Ireland, England, Wales, Scotland, France and Germany. So if we do one thing here and do this and just bring it. Okay. All right. So there's values they will become relevant now in a second. But if we go back to the pie chart, okay, which we're running this in, what we're doing is we're basically after we create the, the data frame, we're going to do a sum on each column. We just showed you there, we're doing some on Ireland, England, Scotland, Wales, France, and Germany. Okay. The whole idea behind that is yeah, just to get the sum, and that goes into the bar chart and the pie chart creation down there in a while. So, next thing we'll do is go we'll obviously we'll create the pie chart first. What we'll do is create the a fig, I think called a figure. And it's just basically going to, it's going to tell you to plot the figure with these dimensions on these two lines. Okay. Next thing is we're going to apply some data to the plot, but we're actually going to apply some um, labels and sizes and so on and so forth and colors to the actual pie chart. Okay. So each section of the pie chart is going to have a name and it's going to, the names are going to be the countries that we have in Excel sheet. Sizes are going to be the size of each section of the pie chart, and these values here come from where we created those values up here from the data frame. Okay, then um, each pie chart, each section of the pie chart is going to have a color assigned to it. Okay, um, so it's straightforward, you can change these to any colors you want. So you can change the blue, just change the yellow green to yellow, so on and so forth, whatever colors you want. Um, they can be changed and the final thing here in this section is explode what explode does is it allows a certain section of the pie chart actually to be um, make it more prominent when the pie chart is created so you'll see here that Ireland 
is basically out and it's probably a bit more prominent from the rest of the countries in the pie chart but you can do this for any of the countries you don't have to just do it for ireland but you can do it for any um and we've just marked it as 0.2 but you can change those values around and play with it and it will give different look and feels but essentially it's emphasizing that that section of the pie chart for ireland is more uh, it's shown more prominently on in the output okay so next thing we're going to do is plot the pie chart physically and this references a number of the variables we create, create up here right so sizes we can see comes from this line here explode comes from this line we just talked about uh, labels comes from this line colors comes from this line here obviously if you change any of these you just feed into this here Auto percent is just applying, you just apply this applies the percentages to each section of the pie chart. Shadow equals true and start angle equals on 40. That shadow equals true is just purely shown. If you can see here, there's a bit of a shadow here. And the start angle is just the angle that the pie chart's at. Um, you can, again, change these values, you can change that to false, change this to any value you want it, and it will recreate the value um, on the peak into GUI. All right. So the next line we're going to do for this pie chart is plot the axis and basically very straightforward it creates the pie chart like a circle no nothing major or spectacular in that that's what that line's doing and then this last bit is actually what it's doing is going and take all the information we've created up above here all these lines down here and it's just basically plotting them on the dashboard okay so it's taking a, it's basically calling like creating out a canvas and it's going to draw it and then it's going to these are these here measurements are actually so well, this line shows it on the output window but these actual measurements are where on the window it is residing so in this instance this is plotting the pie chart down here in this section when we get further down what you'll see is um for the, these two You'll see the same lines, but you'll see different coordinates, and that just allows us to line them up um, on the output window at the GUI. All right, so that's actually, in a nutshell, how you'll create a bar chart. You can obviously go and play around with these um, these parameters and these values, variables here to give it a different look and feel as you want. Um, so that's not; these aren't all set in stone. So this just gives you a flavor of actually how you could create some from bringing in some data into a data frame. And then applying a bit of formatting on it and then showing the output on the GUI win, GUI interface. All right, the counter interface. So let's move on then to the bar chart. So next one we're going to look at is the bar chart here area. So as you'll see with this bar chart, um, again, I want to show you the relevance of these numbers. I earlier on in the video showed you some value. So therefore, Ireland 6274.68 in England is. 639831 as an example, 639821. So I just did that sum up on the Excel sheet to show you the relevance of that, summing up with those and where this comes in here, okay? So what we're gonna do here, okay, we go down here. This basically will show you how to create a bar chart. It will be pretty similar to the pie chart. There is obviously a couple of the values are and the calculations are actually exactly the same. But then actually how we create the bar chart is a small little bit different. So again, what we're gonna do is gonna create a figure and just basically plot the figure. Pretty straightforward. Uh, give it the labels. So the labels we see here along this axis, okay? And then this, what this label position does is it will go and it will look at these labels here but what it's doing actually is looking at the length of labels. So it's essentially calculating how long it is, which is essentially the sum, okay? Um, which actually is also done here. Sorry, my apologies. It can just calculate the length of the labels that will become relevant down here now in a second. And the sum, again, sorry about that, is it calculates the sum. These values come from up here, all right? So pretty straightforward. So the next thing um, we're going to plot this bar chart is we, again, we're going to call the label position, okay, uh, with the labels, and that's for the X ticks, all right. Um, 
So we're going to call a label position here in the country sum. So we'll label this value, this value. I'm going to line at center and I'm going to give a value of alpha one. On the ticks then, uh, we're just basically going to say it's going to be the label position and the labels, okay? And again, the labels are basically, it's just, it's basically calculating the length of the, R, the values for Ireland, which essentially is pretty much the sum. Um, the Y label then is going to be volume of country X and Y labels, which are obviously these values here. Okay. Now we'll go back here. Then the we're going to look at the, the tight layout. Now the reason with the tight layout is I was trying to get the X and Y labels to fit and they weren't viewing properly when I did a bit of research and just check this out, just double check things. In actual fact, by putting the tight layout, what it does is it reformats the output window um, for this particular uh, bar chart. And that allows the volume of country to actually be shown within the chart. Okay, so that's all that is. Um, again, what you would do with that is, based on your own, if you're doing this, you would go and change those settings based on your output window to what you desire. Uh, again, title very straightforward is volumes of products sold okay and the x ticks is rotation is 30 horrors and there's alignment and all that is is these values here it's giving them a value uh sorry a horizontal um a tick it's making them at an angle of 30 degrees that's all that is now you could have them horizontal and just be whatever it was you can change that value um that 30 here to whatever angle value you want so that's all that is okay so the next bit is um, relevant. This is what this is to do with is this is the bit that gives you these figures here. Okay. And uh, we'll just talk through that. So essentially what you're doing is you have country sum up here. Okay. Uh, where did I put it? My apologies. Where has it gone to? Country sum. Where is it? Has it disappeared? Yes, there it is there. You got your country sum there. Okay. Uh, essentially what it's doing is it's going through each, basically going through each value, each region over each value of country sum. And then it's looking at for each index value, it's plotting the data points on the Y. Okay. So it's basically saying, saying where well, you have, it finds some Ireland, and then you have the data points, which the, the y values. It basically they're basically the summations. It takes those values, and then it applies them up here. Okay, so that's all that that line is doing. Uh, plot dot show is basically just it's saying show the actually output win output uh, bar chart. And then again, this is similar to the pie chart. These are just basically putting the physical bar chart. On the tprinter GUI interface. Now the only difference on this last line to what you had before is, and I mentioned this above, these values. And these values are slightly different, which as you'll see, they're basically different because they're putting them at a different point on the screen, and that's all it does. So when you're doing this yourselves, if you've got a number of these charts on the screen, you just need to make sure that these values. Um, are you changed differently to make sure that pos the positioning on the actual TKinter GUI interface um, basically is correct and they're not overlapping each other or one's hiding on top of the other. All right. So our last um, one we're going to look at here is this one. And this one's a bit involved because we can change based on months, uh, certain values, okay? Um, in the drop down menu, okay? And it will give us different values outputs on that chart, all right? It doesn't change anything here on this or this, it just is only on this particular chart here. So let's go back and have a look at the code, right? So there's a couple of things going on here. Start off, we have a lookup uh, variable which gives us a list of all the months uh, of January to December, okay? And then what we have is then called a variable. And the variable is basically just saying it's looking for whatever in the dashboard is picked at the point in time. Okay, 
um, that will become relevant now in a second and then it's basically saying the variable is also set to the lookup look up here okay list and value zero so basically saying that when we open the dashboard um, the default value to apply to the drop down menu is January it's index value of zero okay so the next thing we're doing is we have a thing called a variable called W and it's an option menu and what it is is it's essentially um, it's essentially within the dashboard it's applying the value variable these here and then it's basically saying go and look up use this lookup um, what choose whatever the value that lookup is all right the reason you have star is the star then it basically allows you to pick any of those values so if you didn't have the star there in front of the lookup you most likely would only pick january because january was the default uh, because that was set in the settings the default at index value is zero all right and then basically this is just where we're what we're doing is we're placing this option menu here so it's basically the placing of this menu here that's what these lines are for again pretty similar to pie charts and bar charts it's you position Oriel X and Oriel Y um, you change those around so you can position them anywhere you want on the uh, TQ inter interface all right so next one is and this kind of will lead into up here but we wanted to go through this first uh, go through these couple of bits is we have a function here called select values and all this is doing is basically it's returning the value um, that is picked from the drop down menu so essentially saying we've created a value here called picked value and we're basically saying see this variable here it's this variable is basically linked into looking up what's here so whatever is passed to this variable by looking using this lookup here it's basically saying get that value so it basically stores it temporarily in this picked value then what it's doing is and we'll go through this um, here but it's basically passing this drop um, this value whatever is in pick value uh, up to it's, it's passing to a value called month which is being passed to this class called drop down change okay and when it's in the drop down change it's going to do a couple of checks for us so we'll check, go through those now in a second but essentially it's going so it's picking the value assigned to pick value pick value then is assigned into the class drop down change and the drop down change in a second will do a couple of things and then it will based on that give us the charts we want so we'll go through that in a second so the last few things here is these two lines is basically just the button um say it's linking it on the dashboard um and basically given a just text select value and then it's saying basically when the button's clicked you just run this function here selected value okay so that's linking the button to the function selected value and that's how basically by the click of the button it goes to selected value which goes then passes values up to the class drop down chain so once we've selected a value and it's gone through here so it basically next thing that happens is I've written a bit of code here i'm not going to go through every line i'll just go through the first line but it's the pretty much um the logic in it uh, is pretty straightforward all right so down here so this is a class first of all a class called drop down change right and what this class for drop down change is is checking um what month was basically picked um from the click of the button on the drop down menu and then it's part it's creating some values on the back of that which will allow us to then change the chart. So this is this can be used anywhere else as well if you want to um, if you want to use that uh, this functionality. Um, it's a good good way to create repeatable functionality. Okay. So down here, what we said is well, we got picked value. We passed. We created a basically a value called month variable for month, and we assigned it basically to the drop down change picked value. So essentially, whatever's in this here now got passed up here. So um, what we're doing basically here is if we passed up January, okay, okay, and we basically said if the value that was month 
that was passed from down here, which, which is as an example if it was January. So if we went like this, okay, so we picked January, right? January would now be a, through this logic here. Go click on the button and through the logic, it would sign the month. Then the month says, okay, um, we're gonna bring it back up to the class, okay? So it's basically saying, if, through this loop here, if I, in this instance, for I and X, so if I, with month is equal to I, okay? So if we're saying, January, which we've passed through the function to the, the code below, is equal to i. Okay, so if it's in here, and the month is equal to January, uh, which we passed, uh, we're going to apply it, like, say a is equal to 1, and um, we're going to pass the value of 1 down to the function create, create, create inter chart. Okay, so essentially is, we down below assign a value of month, um, to January in this instance and we're basically saying if that value month is for every, any value of i so it iterates through here and if the value of month we pass is equal to any of those value i and that value month we pass is equal to January we're going to assign the value 1 so as an example if we pick February then it would again iterate through here and say that February is in here because the February is past the month and it's equal to i and because it's a there's a value of february in here as when it turned to the iteration and as the month we pass is equal to february so it's passed a equal to two and again it would pass a so if this is not true it goes down to this because it keeps looping down until it actually gets to the point of a value and these are all unique so this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so in this instance say we picked january uh it iterated true says january's in here and basically the month that we passed with January. So yes, that's successful. It's then assigned A equal value one and it's passed basically create a variable that says it's basically equal to this. Gonna pass it down to create into chart A. Okay. So if we just minimize this and okay. So what it's doing next is it's coming down and it is essentially because we say success is equal to one because we pick January and January is assigned a value of one. We basically assign and again another value a, but it's only within this function. And uh, we basically said that a is equal to the index for all these values for January. Um, so if we go back over here uh, into the Excel, these values are all index value for January. Okay, so that's index zero. This would be index one, this would be index two, and so on and so forth. So what I would do is it would create pass all these. So this would be Ireland index value zero, index England index value zero, Wales index value zero, Scotland index zero for this line. Okay. And we go back here. Excuse me. Let's go back. Yeah, there we go. So essentially what it's doing is as it's checking each month and it's validating each month, it's passing a value, say one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. So we have a value of success up here. Where is it going? Oh, there it is. Yeah, sorry. The value of success. And that value of success is being passed in here. And if it's basically saying if success is equal to one, then we we are saying we've the user is chosen January. We take January and we then go and pull all the data on off the data that's been imported through the data frame, um, but with the index of value zero for that line January. Obviously, then if it's equal to one or it's equal to two, sorry, which was signed above, then we move to the next line, which has an index of value of one for that line, and we pull in all the data. If it's value three, so on and so forth. So it just keeps going down, and obviously. The, the logic behind doing it this way is that if you, in this scenario, if you're using this for something else, but what we can do is if you don't have the values here as an example correct, these, these won't work, all right? So it's important to get these values correct so that it all matches up correctly, all right? So this chart basically, as it goes down to each line, if you notice over here, as I'm selecting different values, it's rerunning through this code. So it's gone to March now, 
So essentially, if I go back here, um, boom, boom, boom. So that'd be January, uh, yeah. So this line here. So essentially, as we change each one and hit the button, the select value, it goes and recalculates, and then it just basically runs the plot um, based on these values here. So as an example, I basically, because I changed that to March, it went to back into the data frame and it picked out index value two for March and pulled all that data in and basically refreshed the screen for that the chart um, to show the data. So you can iterate through that all the time. Um, I'll probably do in another video is actually change that a bit to allow it that when you change the values on the drop down, it automatically updates the uh, logic, uh, the chart. So you don't even have to click, click the button. So that's for another video. I plan to do a couple more videos on this and build this out, but that's for another day. All right. So essentially that's how if we just go down here again, like the other pie charts and bar charts, it, it so this is basically for changing the values. It again, it just has the properties here that you would use uh, to change any of the, the X and the Y axis. Um, again, we've got to use tight layout, title, volume of products sold, similar to the other charts. And then it's just about the rotation again, it's about the labels on the bottom as uh, so horizontal line center. So in a nutshell now what we've done is we've created three charts, loaded the data in, created the charts, and then we've created one of the charts that allows us to change based on the change in the value of a drop down menu, it changes the chart. Created the labels, created percentages in the pie chart obviously, and then created on the bar chart, the summary high level values that equate to each bar. So that's how you would start um, creating bar charts, load them up and show them on a TK Inter GUI interface. So I hope you liked that today. I hope you got learned a lot out of it. I'll uh, post this up, obviously up on YouTube. So we appreciate if you, on YouTube, can you click the subscribe button and alert. Uh, we'd really appreciate that. Uh, plenty more videos to come, working on building out more stuff, trying to make them as practical as possible so that people can actually use this in a work environment or for a project that they're working on. We'll be online soon again with more videos. So thanks for visiting us and we'll see you soon.